actual numbers. So to do that, it gets a little bit tricky, little bit craziness happening here. Uh, I can say, okay, if I go into this one, well, hold on, before I do that, if I click on one of these items, and then let's just double click on it, and that will then open up this field. I'm in the format data series. I'm in uh, th this one to the item with the right with the bars, and we have the primary axis versus the secondary axis. What we wanna do is add a secondary axis. So I'm gonna add that, and then I'm gonna close this back up. It will often put these numbers on the right-hand side. I don't need that for this particular graph, so I'm just gonna remove them, clicking on these numbers and deleting them. Now that that is in place, I can then go up to my data, which is in the chart designs, and then the data, uh, the data group, select data, and what I'd like to do, so notice that this right here is, is being tied to this series of numbers. What I wanna do is I'm gonna pick the second data set and notice I'm gonna change, another, I'm gonna add another X, I'm gonna make it different. So I'm gonna say select this information, I'm gonna hit this and then go on over and this I want my Z score. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the Z score, control shift down, make sure that it picks up the right number. So I'm gonna say, okay, and okay. Now notice sometimes it kind of messes it up here. So make sure that this is listing all the numbers, it doesn't just have one at the top. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And if I go back up top again, now I don't see any change, like what happened? Well, I've gotta pull in my secondary one here. So I gotta hit the plus button on the right. And then my axes, I'm gonna hit the arrow on the right of the axes and here's my secondary horizontal, which I now have the option for. So I'm gonna select that. It normally, I'm gonna hit the plus button to get rid of this stuff on the side. It normally happens at the top. So it puts it at the top. I wanna bring it to the bottom. So if you double click on this, then I'm over here on the right hand side of the format axes. I'm gonna go down to the labels and then under the labels, we got the label position. I'm gonna select the position and bring it low. I wanna bring the position low. And so there we have it. So now I'm gonna go into this. So now I can represent this by Z-score as well as by the this, this number. So if I was to look at this calculation, then you'll recall that I had, had the probability being, this is the 80, so representing the 80 uh, right here. And then when we calculated the Z, the Z was at 50. So you can see the Z, the, the middle point, of course, is where the Z is going to be zero. And so then we're up to 50 right there is going to be that line. So now I've got the two X's and I can represent this graph either way, whether I be talking about Z's, which you'll remember is, is how close to kind of the center point, the spread of the items, and then, and then the actual number values, the X's, uh, that we have here. Now you can also kind of play with these uh, Z scores. Like you might, you might want to put the distance between the Z scores equal to like a standard deviation. So you could try to adjust the spread of uh, the Zs as well as the Xs. I'm not going to get into that in detail right now. I'll let you kind of go in. Like you can, you can play with those on your own and say, you know, what should be the intervals be between the Zs and the X's if you wanna get a little bit more detailed there, but I'll leave the defaults for it for now. So what we have now is somewhat of a, di a dynamic type of chart. So here's all of our data up top. If I wanted to, based on this information, to change uh, the, the test scores, then of course I can do that. And I can say, if I bring this down to 60, then for example, now we're at the 60, the orange representing P of X is less than or equal to 60, which would be the area under the orange area. And obviously the inverse, when we're talking about P of X is greater than 60, is now being represented by the blue area. And if you were to get to the area, it should be calculated up to, uh, it should be equal to 93.04% you know, of, of the, the area under the curve. We can also represent it with the Z scores so the Z-score is going to be that line right there, right? Which is now, according to this, at the 148. 
sell at 148 uh, looks about right that we have the the z score right there let's do it let's bring it up to like 65 so now we put, brought it up there the z score is around uh, 0.98 which is right around here right and so again you can kind of adjust let's make this as large as we can just to play with it so so then we've got the z score here they put at uh the 0.98 and we can adjust this let's put this up to like let's put it up to uh 90 and so now we've got most of it being orange representing uh everything that is less than or equal to 90 right and then we've got the everything above is the 90 and above for the blue and then the z is at this 1.49 which should be represented you know right here 149 looks like it's basically boom it gets a little a little twisted on the way down but there that is so that gives you kind of your pictorial representation now in future presentations we'll we'll see how we can kind of make a graph that might be more specific to questions that are greater than and then there is a way that we can do it between two but just to get one graph that can give you kind of a pictorial representation of all this stuff this isn't a bad one uh, to work with so I'm gonna now do some formatting of everything we've done I'm just gonna make this data I'm gonna select the whole thing and do my normal formatting which is home tab font group I'm gonna make this blue if you don't have that blue more colors standard I use this blue okay and then drop down and make it bordered I'm gonna make all of this blue bordered and blue I'm gonna make this blue bordered and blue I'll put some borders around this one but not blue and then this I'll make all of this blue and bordered as well border blue this one I'll just make bordered and then I'll make all of this bordered blue too. So t -t 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 -t, control shift down and I'll say border blue on that one. And there it is. We'll work a few more of these examples uh, in future present. Let's put some borders around this for fun. Just put some borders around our starting data. All right.